Okay, so we can start. Um, okay, so uh, today we're going to go as, as usual. We're going to start by um, uh, the Innovation Hub meeting. We're going to start by uh, having the update from uh, CEOs and then uh, uh, that would be about 25 minutes. Each of the CEOs is going to provide um, an update, one to two minute update of, of what they're working on and uh, what, what they have done last week, what's the goal next week. Uh, please make sure to be ready to share your screen and, uh, and be able to, um, if you can also share your uh, video such that while you're talking, we can see you. And uh, we're going to go through the names. Uh, uh, Stefan is going to put the uh, order of the companies. We just order them based on the name of the companies goes from start to end. So please make sure uh, you be ready such that we can have a rapid transition from one company to next. We need to get more and more efficient in this to have a rapid transition. Uh, share your screen, show what you're doing and, and, and share your uh, video stream also. Um, um, uh, uh, as one of the companies in the, uh, in the hub, Polyab, I'll give an update from my side. Uh, so one, one thing which is, uh, has been finalized is we are going to have a spring and summer goal of the projects for all the challenges globally, all be about carbon removal. We have talked about a few times. This is in line with the carbon removal, um, Elon Musk prize on XPRIZE and uh, it's very important for all of you to see the, uh, you know, go to xprize.org, read about the carbon removal. Um, there is a document which Stephanie, if you can put that uh, up on this uh, uh, Zoom also would be good that uh, they can, you can go and um, read about this. Mainly there are two goals. The goal is uh, to come up with innovative ideas to have, uh, carbon removal with the uh, overall negative impact is very important that the impact be negative, meaning that some of the methods you have, it generates carbon by itself, but it takes the carbon out and you want to see overall the impact is negative. Um, and the other piece is about measurement, you know, methods that bring more innovative way of measurement. And any methods you want to show is critical to show that actually in your simulation, in the machine you're building, what is the impact on the carbon? So uh, we had one of the coaches, Don, has put an example machine on the Discord. It's a very simple machine with three parts and it shows like, you know, you have cars and, and factories and trees and the simulation shows, for example, every year how much carbon is get generated and removed by trees. And if you change the balance of the number of each, how the, uh, the impact can be negative or positive through years as it goes forward. That's a very simple example, but what's important is it shows you the methods to be able to simulate the impact of your solution. As we discussed over the next two weeks, we're going to prepare more and more of these machines. Uh, Anushan, sorry, the CEO of uh, XPRIZE is going to give us a talk sometimes after June 12. The date is not fully set, but it would be in that week. And um, when that happens, we want every company to show the best machine they have around carbon removal and its measurements. So make sure that, that we get ready for that. I think that's the main point. The second one I want to say is as of this week, you're going to have ability to bring any um, uh, any participant of challenge in any country to join to your startup as a team member. And there would be a process, we're going to talk about it on the uh, Discord, that how you do that and how they, uh, how they can join uh, the Innovation Hub and they can look at the work that each of the company does. There's a channel called Innovation uh, Hub Products uh, that you have to you know, uh, advertise and talk about uh, you know, what amazing solutions you're putting such that you can attract more team members to join your uh, startups and that way you can grow your startups. So this is going to start from this week. So the goal is by end of summer, you should have large startups with many innovators 
that they're collaborating and come with amazing solutions and go out. Okay, with that, let's start to go through the companies. Uh, Stephanie, who, who are we going to go first with? If we can first have the CEO of the super capable team, go ahead. Please unmute and share your screen. Hi, hello. Um, so this week we have been working on, first of all, we've been working on- Can you share your, your video also, please? Oh, uh, sure, one time. Um, here. Hello. So this week we've been basically just um, creating ideas for the carbon removal thing. And also we have, um, we haven't been able to do too much this week, especially with um, school being almost over and a lot of tests being given. But we have also been looking at finalizing the designs of these and just making sure that all these designs would work in Blender and somehow they would actually, you could make them in Blender. And after that, we've also have the color picker. And for this, we're just getting feedback because at this point, it's pretty much ready to go. And we want to either implement it in Polyev or get a bit more feedback first and then um, do something to design it in maybe even Blender or something. So how it works is basically um, when you click on this custom color button, which is going to be added to the, to the basic colors that you can put on Polyev, it takes you to this color box or this, and it has RGB sliders on them. The reason for RGB sliders is that they're simple, yet they still show you the numbers, which makes it feel more um, like math. And it actually shows you how numbers and math corresponds to the color and how each value um, changes, slightly changes the color in this little color box over here. And once you like the color you have here, what you do is you press OK. And there's a second option. This is for basically when you um, create a custom color, then change it, and then want to get it back. It doesn't it doesn't go into a library for you. So instead, what you can do is you can go to that chip where you put the custom color. Oh, sorry. You can go to that chip, and then basically what you do is you press the eyedropper, then press on that custom color, and automatically it it sets that as your custom color. You can you can choose anything in the um anything on your screen, but it was originally meant to simply help you get some of your custom colors back after you change them. But if you don't change them, they will stay. So basically what happens when you change your custom colors, it just changes from white to that color and it stays there until you change it again. And over here is a, a brief explanation of it. And I don't think I explained enough what this is. This is, these designs are for a poly, um, poly, avatar library most like that's basically what it is it's to create a customized avatar that looks like poly based off poly and it has a few more references what we have here is sections like head glasses different types of hair for boys and girls um eyes the reason we put separate eyes is to help signify the point of boy and girl in case of like it being difficult to tell and last but not least we have mustache, a few hats, um, a mouth, which you can flip up and down to give the, the, give off the impression that you're happy or sad, a, a nose, ear, and clothes, along with shoes. So that's pretty much it for my company. Thank you. Thank you. So one thing you all keep in mind is many of your companies have got to the point that your design is to get implemented. There is a session after uh, the hub call for the design. So all of you that are interested to take your design to actual implementation, you should make sure that you attend the call after we are done with the innovation hub. Stephanie. Thank you. Next, we have the CEO of the Next Generation Innovators. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, can, you, can you hear my voice? Yes, we hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, we made a prototype uh, of the page uh, with a ladder uh, of CEO of uh, Polish Innovators. 
Uh, I will uh, share my uh, prototype. Uh, you can talk about, uh, you can see him uh, Lala Aliyeva. Uh, Aliyeva's uh, profit page in Polya. Uh, you can follow, uh, uh, you can see the profit Competitivity as XP points uh, and etc. Uh, the beds and etc. Created machines. Uh, you can make a discussion. Sorry. I make, you can make a discussion with it. Uh, I made a discussion page for it. Okay. You can see the, uh, the comments. The comments are examples for uh, creating page, you can uh, see the reply of these comments uh, there. You can read a uh, comment for a discussion you can send there, from there. Uh, and uh, we are uh, working on the parts for carbon removal project, uh, as I said and uh, last week. Uh, and we made uh, anchor, uh, we added anchors and etc. in 3GS. Website. We will uh, make it uh, in the next session, design design session. That's it. Very nice. Thank you, Iman. And next we have the Samurai CEO, Jagan. Please go ahead. Yes. This week we have been uh, working on uh, a re carbon removal solution, and it involves drones and bamboo. So here is the simulation of that. So you can see here there's a drone which uh, which has four propellers. It flies to a certain distance above. It flies to a certain height and then it just stays in that height because it has a depth sensor which senses its altitude and maintains its altitude. It also has a seed dispenser and a water dispenser. When it runs out of seeds, it shows this red signal and it will show a land button. So when you click on this land button, it will slowly drop to the ground. And all of this is powered by solar energy. This is the mechanism for the seed dispenser. As you can see, the seed falls near this cogwheel and it turns and pushes it down. It pushes it one by one. And you can refill seeds using this lid here. And then this is the mechanism for the water uh, dispenser. Also for this, we have uh, written the wattage and all the values for how much uh, energy it's producing and consuming. We have also come up with a way to fund this. So there'll be a ad or a website here. And then when you click on this ad button, it'll show something like this, plan six bamboo by watching an ad, or you can just directly donate it here. So the ad revenue from one ad is 0 0.6 cents, which will allow you to plant eight seeds, but it's reduced to six bamboo seeds to compensate other expenses like drone and water. And then we have been researching on the bamboo types and we have created a world map showing all the bamboo uh, varieties which can be grown in which place of the world. This is what our team was working on last week. We have been creating a furniture library. We have brainstormed some ideas. We will be creating the 3D model soon in Blender and Paint 3D. And this is our company's logo. Yes, that's it. Very nice, very innovative. Thank you so much. And next we have uh, the Poly Pros. Does one of the co-founders want to present? Um, yes, hello, can you hear me? 
Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yep, hello. Um, so I'm Kanan. Uh, I will be presenting the work done by Polypros. Uh, we're a team mainly concerned with um, the terrain library, which is all things nature, like plants, mountains, and as the name suggests, different types of terrain. Um, this week, as part of our uh, progress, we've identified numerous bugs. Um, they all revolve around the coloring uh, function. So we've identified the current parts that are projected on the screen. Um, for some reason, they cannot be recolored. I think the main problem with that is that um, instead of one element being uh, labeled as colorable, there are multiple elements, which confuses the program. So in the coming days, we'll be trying to solve that. So that's the progress for the terrain library. And for the carbon removal project, um, our teammate Aman, he has developed um, a machine that demonstrates a possible solution. If he can just bring that up right now. Um, so while he brings it up, the concept is that um, a truck um, carries containers of CO2, carbon dioxide, to a hub for plants and trees. And um, that carbon dioxide is then emitted and absorbed by the plants, which in turn produce oxygen, replacing the carbon dioxide. Um, we will probably add to this with team feedback and probably refine the many technical issues that would occur if this was applied to a real life scenario. But this is the, the, the fundamentals of the solution. So yeah, that's about it for our progress. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. And next we have the CEO of Polly's Innovators. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, this week I created some logo for this. And um, can you hear me? Also? Yes, Lala, we can hear you. I will share a screen. Oh. Just a moment, please. Can you see? Yes, we can see. I create this for police innovators. And we choose that is the slogan, innovation time with us, police innovators. And also I prepared this and a CEO of police innovators. And I shared this on social media, my Telegram account. And I want to say this week, um, me and Amy, we uh, worked together. So I said last week, I want, I say my opinion about to get follower on this card, oh sorry, on PolyApp. And um, uh, we worked together with, um, I work with Amy. And uh, thanks for making this, I mean, I will show what's that. For example, we put any, now we, everyone can set their display name. And firstly, for to go to this page, we can put someone's um, page, also display names, then we can see this. And if you want, you can follow. And this is and that parts mathematics and robotics ability it means ideas that and we can see created the machines that's every machines which is the lalas or in another player's create but uh, also we want to add um forward projects forward machines which is them that um most liked uh, projects also we will add them and then can you show another and discussion what's that this is a, a look like and this is like a means uh, design idea comment can you show discussion part please ah yes and in that what we can do this for example uh, uh, in that we can say everything about lala's machine for example lala's cannot prepare um a uh, gold chip and you can write on the in that uh, area lala you can uh, create a, a gold chip or turtle chip uh, you must improve that ability you can share your opinion with me or with 
anybody. Then also you can oh, um, put another links, your machina ID, and at the end, everyone will show another match, will uh, play another machines. And I won't say my main, um, uh, my aim. So uh, what I say, what I think about to get follower on Polya. Now in that uh, century, in 21st century, every people, teenagers, adults, young people, everyone like to get followers. And um, so when you feel, uh, you feel a star when you get follower. And if we add this, some young, some adults, some teenagers, uh, they will learn about polyap and they will, in my opinion, they will participate on that polyap mass challenge. And at the end, also, they will share polyap link, polyap, their polyap uh, account for to get followers. At the end, that polyap, everyone will learn about polyap and uh, I think it will improve this way. That's my idea about this, to get followers. Fantastic. So, uh, I want to just mention one thing. I'm seeing a lot of amazing ideas that you have, and especially the collaboration between different startups is, is really, really amazing. That happens in real life also. Many of the companies work with each other because they have complementary solutions. So I really encourage you to reach out to each other to help each other instead of repeating the work of each other. That's fantastic. That's great. Yes, thanks. Also, I thank to Emin for help me. Thanks. Okay, so next ones go. Let's let's do faster update because we wanna we need to get on, on time. We have about three, four minutes remaining. Go ahead, Stefani, please. Great. Next we have the CEO of the creative technology team. Nick, please go ahead. I'm um, high. Okay, so um, this week was kind of like a slow week because uh, I tried reaching out to Muhammad. I don't know if he saw my text, but it's okay because um, we uh, took this week to like plan now, I guess. Uh, basically, um, I need to, I, I want to get the alphabet thing in poly up. Um, like, can you share your video also such that we see you when you talk sorry Nikon? Go ahead. Oh well I'm on a PC right now. Don't worry, don't worry, go ahead. Don't worry, go ahead. All right, so I think I showed this to you guys last time, but we have this um alphabet um and poly up thing like this. Uh there we go. Yeah, so we have the alphabet here. And uh, I need to get, I don't, uh, how would I like get this in poly up is like my question. So Nikon, there, there is going to be design call just right after this, please stay. And then uh, Muhammad will uh, discuss it. And uh, there are many companies that they got to the point that they have to have the design to go to the next level to become a library. So please remain on the call and then you will have a discussion. That's great. Uh, well, I have to go somewhere at 11, so I don't know if no, I can. No, no problem. The, 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 the session would be recorded so you can listen to okay, that. Okay, okay. Can okay. you send, like, the link in the Discord? It would be in Discord, yes. Okay. All right. uh, that's right. it. Thanks Thank so you. much, Nick. Next, we have the CEO of Shindo. Sorry, please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, lately, we have discussed solutions of carbon removal. One minute. Sure, no problem. And face if you can, you can uh, turn on your video also while you're doing the screen would be great. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I can't. Uh, so, uh, firstly, our idea was to plant uh, more trees uh, beside the uh, house, houses and 
houses and uh, factories, streets. Also, we are discussing another plan, and it is to it is to um, recycle uh, carbon into to make it fuel and design into, for designing a machine that uses electric electro machine mechanical processes to convert CO2 into ethanol that can be used in factories. And uh, we have another for another idea for a new library that is lands library to make uh, oceans and deserts, also snow snowy places and ice. So thank you for that. Faris, that's great for the <coughs> for the desert uh, and and things like that. Please uh, <coughs> contact the, what Kenan was just talking about the train library that get done. You may have it there, and the other idea is great. I mean, you should follow on the uh, on the ideas you had for the uh, cavalry removal. That was great. Thank you. Fantastic. Next, can we have the CEO of the Golden Ratio? Please go ahead. Um. Hello. My name is Eliazi. I'm from Sultan to Oman, and I'm the CEO of Golden Ratio. So this week we've been working on uh, adding um, 3D flags, uh, not all, for all the countries, only the countries that has been participating on the Innovation Hub. We were supposed to add all the flags for all the countries, but this will be the next step. So <clears throat> then we, we've been working on adding voices to up. We wanted to, to add voices to pull it up. So we tried to do it like this. The, here's you can find the options uh, for adding voices. I don't know if you can hear it. For example, the cat voice and um, the other options, any other, uh, other animals or a thunderstorm, raining, whatever. But here also you can, uh, here's an option you can add your own voice to upload an audio MP3 and um, add another voice, not only these are the option. And the next thing, sorry, for the, the next thing is um, that you can create anything. We've uh, added here a tool that you can create or design anything, any 3D shape. And here's the um, options of colors. So we also, we've been working on uh, uh, updating the carbon removal. Uh, but we need to do more research about it. And this is it for this week. And the goal for next week is to add um, audio ship. And also maybe we want to add a typing tool to poly up. And that's basically it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aliasi. And next we have the CEO of Imagistation. Toronto, please go ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Toronto from Azerbaijan and I'm representing the Imagestation team. And this week uh, we created our logo in PolyUp. So can I share my screen? Yes, please go ahead. Can you see? Yes, we can see it. This is our logo. And also this week we decided uh, to, build, uh, to build a new library and it will be a vehicle library. Um, now. So you can see the different types of uh, vehicles like land transports, they include buses and different types of buses, ambulance, and also air transport and the water transport. And if you have any ideas about the vehicle library, you can share it with us, we'll be very grateful. We'll be very glad to, to hear your ideas. And also uh, one of our team members created a machine last week, but unfortunately I couldn't show it to you as I had 
some problems with the internet. So uh, this is a machine about nature. Save the nature. And uh, for the next week, I know we are uh, researching about, we're making research about carbon removal. And I think next week we'll be able to build machines about it. That's all. Very nice, thank you so much. And next we have the CEO of World Poly Innovators, Anabasi, please go ahead. Uh, hello, I'm Anabasi. I have uh, just joined uh, the Poly Innovation Group. Uh, it, I took uh, first place in the Azerbaijan Challenge. Uh, I joined it a little uh, late uh, this week. Uh, I, this week, I am the judge of uh, World Poly Innovators. Uh, sorry, I could not make a match in uh, this week because I because uh, I just joined it. Uh, this week, I made uh, a logo. I made uh, three logos. Uh, I will uh, demonstrate it now. This is the, uh, I will demonstrate now. Uh, can you see? Um, not yet. Now it's loading, yes. Yeah, the can see. Uh, and can you see now? Uh, this is the first logo. Uh, I read uh, the name of my company how. Um, uh, this is the uh, second logo. Uh, how as uh, we call the world poly innovators. Uh, I have demonstrated that people like uh, the world community hold hands. Uh, Polyp is written here because I am a student of the Polyp Innovation Hub. Uh, this, the third logo, uh, her, uh, I wrote in the capital letter uh, way of my company. I think you choose which is better. Uh, we, we can see uh, your logos. Can I see? It? Uh, the folder okay. of so Trana, this is great. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. So let us uh, let us move on to the other section. So you see, like any other situation that we always say we have to be innovative. We have an issue right now that the number of the companies is increasing and we have updates and the time is too short. So we have to innovate. So next time we'll come with ideas. And, and let's discuss this. What are your suggestions on how to have the updates from CEOs to fit in the short time we have? So consider that as a problem that you all should, should find ideas to make it better. But today, uh, Stephanie, if it's okay, let's have the switch to, the, to the, uh, uh, our guest that we have to make sure we can benefit from his presence. And those of the startups that didn't get a chance to update, please, please, please to put uh, your update in the Innovation Hub uh, chat uh, in, in, in Discord. And this way we can, we can move on uh, to the next session. So I'm very uh, elated to have Kamran Lyon here. Kamran Lyon is a very well-known serial entrepreneur, means that he, ha he has been able to succeed in making many startups to become very uh, large companies with a huge impact. Usually it's hard to make one IPO. IPO means you become so successful that the share of your company is in interest of others to buy in public markets. And usually people succeed to make one of those or a couple of those. He has been able to do three of those and help many other uh, companies to be successful in addition to that, he had had impact on many 
uh, nonprofits and uh, organizations that, that change the world for better, especially in area of innovation. So uh, Kamran, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure is mine. Uh, hello, everyone. Great Thanks. to see you. I don't know if you can see my t-shirt, but uh, <laughs> it is in the honor of uh, the creativity that you are all working on. And, uh, you know, there is a little kid uh, inside uh, every one of us, and we should never let that kid uh, grow. And uh, that kid is the one that has uh, all the innovation and creativity there. So by wearing t-shirts like this, I try to keep uh, that kid alive. And also I feed it at least uh, ice cream once a week, minimum. Uh, that's my belief that if I have ice cream once a week, uh, I will never grow old. Uh, so, <laughs> so far it has worked, I'm still here. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Cameron, uh, it's fantastic to have you here and really appreciate that instead of giving a talk, you would want directly ask us to go to, to the question and answer. That, that's very, very uh, great and, and we appreciate it. I want to start to ask, I mean, you had a question. Do you want to go ahead, please? Well, before we start, oh. I just wanted to say uh, it, how exciting I, it was for me to see all of your projects uh, and uh, the progress that you have made uh, in a short period of time. And uh, uh, I wish I had the ability to get a, a chance to do some of these things as you are doing at your age. Uh, I was uh, 26 years old when I started my first company and uh, uh, it uh, was considered at that time uh, to be very early. Today, if you wait uh, till age 26 and start a company, everybody says, what took you so long? <laughs> but in those days, uh, it was a big deal to start a company when you were only in your 20s. Fantastic. Thank you. I mean, can you please go ahead? Can you unmute and ask your question, I mean? Okay, so let me ask the Amin's, uh, Amin, go ahead. Hello, uh, What problems or difficulties uh, did you face while setting up CAE systems? Um, well, CAE systems was my first company. I. Uh, was working for a big company, Hewlett Packard, and I had an idea. I presented it uh, to my management and asked them to uh, finance it. And uh, they said, no, you are too young and uh, we cannot uh, give you so much uh, responsibility. So I convinced uh, four of the engineers who were uh, working with me in my group. And uh, we left together to go and start a company uh, because as an entrepreneur, uh, you have a vision, uh, you have a belief, and uh, you should uh, pursue that. And uh, don't be afraid about whether uh, you will succeed or not. And uh, we actually were hoping uh, that uh, our idea is so good that uh, many investors will give us money because we were coming from a very successful big company. And uh, we thought that uh, many investors, uh, venture capitalists, uh, would be interested uh, to invest in us. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, we couldn't even find them. Uh, in those days, uh, this was about 40 years ago, uh, we didn't have the internet, so we couldn't do a search to find uh, VCs. So even finding where these people were and what's their number and how to contact them, was a quite a task. And when you did that and you would meet with them, uh, their first view always was, uh, you're so young, you're still a kid. How could you be the CEO of a company? And uh, you have no experience uh, to be CEO. And uh, what is this idea that you have? It, uh, there is nothing like it out there. Uh, so how do you know that people would want this? 
And it was uh, extremely difficult. And uh, we had uh, many, many meetings uh, with investors. Uh, each time uh, we would uh, learn uh, from them and uh, they would say no. And uh, we would uh, uh, go back and think about it and uh, see what we have learned, try to improve our presentation pitch, uh, make it uh, a little bit uh, uh, better. We learned how to present our ideas in a shorter period of time. And uh, still, they wouldn't give us money. Can anyone guess how long it took us, how many meetings we had, uh, how many times they told us the potential investors no before we finally got our uh, first investment? Any guesses? So he somebody says five, says five. somebody says seven, one says 10, another says 15. We are getting closer, but 25, keep going. 30, keep going. 40, better, closer. 50, <laughs> 100, well, no, it was 94, <laughs> 94. Uh, imagine you have meeting, you prepare, it took us nine months and uh, 94 meetings. Uh, you go and present your idea and uh, potential investors say, no, they come up with some reason why they don't want to uh, invest in you. And uh, it's painful. <laughs> it is not a uh, nice to be uh, told no but as an entrepreneur you learn uh, that if your heart says you should do something uh, you should not give up and uh, you go and uh, listen to their uh, criticism uh, you learn what is good about it make some changes improve your presentation and go for the next meeting and uh, it was uh, very, very difficult. And, uh, but one of the things that I learned is uh, if you have belief in yourself and uh, not, if you are not afraid of failure and look at it as each time that you make a presentation and you fail to get money or you fail to convince people if you learn from it as a step stone towards success, then you improve your uh, uh, product, you improve your presentation, and uh, you step by step by step get better. And at some point, uh, people will see the value of your idea, the value of your company, and uh, they will eventually give you money. Uh, but uh, it is never easy because if you have a good idea that other people have not thought about it, it's very difficult to convince people that this is going to be a success. And uh, if you have an idea that other people also have it, uh, then people will immediately ask you, uh, you have so many competitors. Why uh, do you think you will be successful? So it uh, was very difficult for CAE. CAE was computer aided engineering, CAE systems. We developed the engineering workstations that used computer graphics to help you design the chips, the microprocessor chips that uh, you could uh, put inside computers and make uh, uh, more powerful computers. And uh, it was a very unique idea. We thought at the beginning we had no competition, but as uh, we went and talked to more investors, we found out there were three other companies who had thought about it before us. And every time we had to convince people why we were better than the other companies. So it was very difficult, but we didn't give up and uh, we put uh, all of our money uh, 
we kept growing. We had, uh, I had all together nine uh, people in my team and uh, we were operating from one of the uh, co-founders of the company. And uh, after nine months, we were not getting any money, <laughs> uh, no salary. We had to live from our savings. And it was uh, very difficult, but eventually we got our first money. But uh, when we got our money, we were so excited that, oh, we got money. Now we are a real company. And uh, our investors said, why are you so happy? This is the beginning of your problems because now I want results and I want to see how you make my money be big and give it back to me. So a lot of pressure. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, thank you. So let's go with uh, Noel. Can you please go ahead with your question? Uh, my question was, is age a number when it comes to success of building a company? Because um, um, people might underestimate you because of your age and your capability. Therefore, they might not invest in your idea or they might not really consider it as something that is important? That's an excellent question. Uh, actually, because I was so young when I started my company, uh, all of the people who were working for me were older than me. And uh, all of the, it was always difficult to convince uh, people who were older than me to come and work with me. And uh, I learned a lot about how to become a good leader. Uh, you know, when you are trying to attract capable people uh, to join you, if you say that I'm the boss and I will tell you how to do everything, uh, nobody good will join you. Uh, on the other token, if you say, look, uh, I know a little bit, but uh, I believe you know a lot more and uh, we can work together and uh, our team becomes strong and uh, we let uh, the team decide what is the best answer, then they don't feel like they are your employee, they are your boss. They see that they are member of your team. And that way, uh, if you also share some of your stocks with them and make sure that everybody really feels as a team player, then they will join you. And if you get people in your company who are more capable than you and smarter than you, and uh, the team becomes very powerful, then people say, oh my God, <laughs> this uh, company is... Uh, quite amazing because it has attracted so many capable people uh, to join it. Uh, so it is, um, you are right, uh, when you are young, it is very difficult for many, many years. Uh, I was always the youngest person in any of my companies. And uh, in every meeting we would go. I remember when I, in my second company at Cirrus Logic, when I, uh, at that time, I was 30 years old. Uh, I, my, uh, I went to visit Sharp Corporation, which is a huge Japanese company. And because my title was executive vice president, uh, they sent their executive vice president to come and pick me up. And he was 50 some years old and I was 30 years old. And he looked at me and he said, you're only 30. How could you be <laughs> executive vice president? And uh, he saw that uh, my VPs, uh, my vice presidents were uh, 20 years older than me. And he was very surprised. I said, why is it uh, that uh, you are the boss and these people are working <laughs> for you? And, uh, but I kept telling everybody that the, the world is not like a bakery. You know, if you go to uh, buy some uh, bread from bakery, you have to stand in line. And whoever gets there first uh, is ahead of the line. The world is not like that. If you work harder and uh, you are not afraid to uh, be creative, uh, you could uh, 
uh, find ways uh, to achieve things ahead of people who came uh, before you. I was 20 years old. I had two bachelor degrees. And uh, most of the people that, uh, uh, you know, joined, uh, uh, they were 22, 23 when they had their bachelor's degree. I was 21 when I had my master's degree. Uh, so you can always push and work harder, but uh, it doesn't come easy. I would uh, not sleep so much. I studied very hard. I had to work and uh, learn many things. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, following your dream. Fantastic. Jogan, can you please go next? Yes. How do you inspire and motivate other team members? Excellent question. Well, uh, there is a thing called management and then there is a thing called leadership. Do you know what's the difference between management versus leadership? You don't manage people. People don't like to be managed. People like to be inspired. They like to be led by leaders. If you, let's imagine this Jagan. Uh, did I say your name correctly? Is that Jagan or Jagan or? It's Jagan. Jagan, okay. You can pronounce it like that also. <laughs> uh, Think about this way. Uh, your uh, which uh, what's the name of the city you live in? Hyderabad. Hyderabad. Okay. So let's say uh, let's say that uh, you are working uh, with me in my company, and uh, I uh, have uh, you and five other people uh, to come and meet for a company meeting in Delhi. And uh, I can uh, do it in a few different ways. One way is uh, like a dictator, uh, like it is in the army. Uh, I could say that uh, you have to be in the, uh, our office in Delhi, by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And uh, to do that, uh, you fly, uh, take a flight from Hyderabad to Delhi. It leaves at 7 p.m. You arrive in Delhi by 8.30. You check in in hotel uh, so-and-so. And, -so, and uh, uh, you get up at 6 in the morning, uh, have breakfast with the team. You take a bus and come and meet me at 9 a.m. in our Delhi office. Uh, that is one way, but I'm giving you all the details and I am uh, pushing you to do everything my method. That is, uh, how should I say, a hierarchical, a, a, you order people to do everything the way you want. Another way is uh, I say, well, Jagan, uh, you need to be there by 9 a.m., uh, tell me what is your plan and how would you like to get there? And if there are four other people, I ask each one of you that, hey, what is your plan to get there? And I could say there is a flight that leaves at 7 p.m. from Hyderabad to Delhi, but uh, you tell me what you want to do. Then you could say, well, is that okay? I like to come a day earlier. Uh, because I have uh, some cousins I want to visit with them and they have some idea that could be good for our company and uh, I could stay with them in their home and uh, they will drive me. And if we do it this way, uh, we don't spend money for a hotel and the company saves money. Well, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Why not? Really? Another person could say... Uh, well, I am afraid uh, to fly. Uh, I prefer uh, to take uh, the uh, train. Uh, could I uh, take a train? If you are a good leader, you say, 
I don't care how you get there. I give you the freedom. I inspire you to use your own creative way to get there any way that you want to. But all I require is you be there at night. But when I had agreement with you that you go a little bit earlier to stay with your cousin, I should not forget about that. And maybe I call you a day before and I say, did you arrive in Delhi? Is everything okay? Did your cousins accept you to their home? Did they give you good ideas? Learn about these things. So in case your cousin uh, had some emergency and uh, did not want to meet with you, I could help you find another flight or another way uh, to go there. Uh, so, so it is key to understand so it is key uh, to understand that in leadership, you agree with the person about what is the goal, but you let them figure out how to do that. And you trust them, but you agree on maybe every six hours or every 10 hours or once a day, you check with them to make sure they are making progress. That way you are inspiring them to use their brain to do something that makes sense for them rather than being a dictator and tell them you take only this flight, you stay only in this hotel, you only do this thing. Fantastic, Amran. Uh, this Thank is... you very much. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so, Cameron, we we are over time, but it's it's so good what what you're uh, providing us. We'll go one last question. Uh, before I go to the last question, I want to ask you. There are many questions that the the hub team members have, and uh, they have questions about the companies that they're growing. Uh, they're asking, is it possible and okay if they can have you as an advisor that they can ask you questions? We know you are very busy but at least maybe through your social media to, to reach out to you every now and then and be able to ask you questions. Is it okay if they consider you as an advisor for their companies? Sure. Um, well, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook, and on Clubhouse, uh, plus WhatsApp. So uh, I'm available uh, on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. I've reached the maximum number of uh, friends. Uh, so I cannot accept the more people. But on Instagram, Twitter, uh, or Clubhouse, uh, there is no uh, restriction. And uh, uh, we can be friends or be connected. Uh, if uh, you want uh, something uh, more uh, uh, formal, uh, maybe uh, we could uh, arrange a uh, uh, once a uh, month, maybe for uh, half an hour or one hour. I would be happy to uh, be an advisor and you guys can come with your questions and I could answer that uh, uh, for all of you. Uh, happy to do that. Uh, we can do it on Clubhouse or do it on Zoom. I leave it up to you. Uh, we'd be happy to try to help. Fantastic. Really appreciate that. that. That is an amazing opportunity. We definitely uh, use that. So let's, let's have the last question. Uh, John Mark, can you please go with your question? Can you unmute and go? So hi, everyone. Uh, what I just wanted to ask is, what drove you uh, to actually create uh, your company and what made you uh, and your company to be uh, be unique uh, in the way you have created your company uh, because there are some companies which get to the top and that's what I wanted to know about. Yeah. Well, uh, from a young age, since about uh, age eight, uh, I always uh, had a dream that uh, I can help uh, 
to create peace in the world. And uh, it was uh, something that I felt uh, very strong that I should do that. And uh, when I remember when uh, my parents or my uh, family uh, were having get togethers uh, and just talked about uh, family stuff, I would come and tell them, uh, why are you just uh, socializing and chit chatting? Why don't you go and change the world and do something really amazing? And uh, they were really surprised. They would say, you're only eight years old. Uh, shut up and uh, just uh, eat your dinner. <laughs> why do you want to change the world? But uh, I really believed that uh, I had a mission to help uh, have a positive social impact. And uh, it was such a strong belief for me that I followed that uh, quite a bit. And uh, I was, uh, you know, in those days, if you wanted the best education, uh, you couldn't do what we are doing right now. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have the computers. So if you wanted to learn about the most advanced thing, uh, you had to come to America, you had to come to Silicon Valley. Uh, so when I was uh, 17 years old, I told my parents, I'm going to go to America, I'm going to go to American University. And uh, they were telling me that uh, you're crazy. Uh, we don't have any uh, relatives in America. How could you go alone? And uh, how uh, will you survive? And I said, don't worry, <laughs> I will find a way. And uh, thanks uh, to my father, he had encouraged me to learn English at a young age. And uh, so my English was quite good. And I applied uh, to many universities and um, I finally got accepted. And I came to a first university, which wasn't so good. Then I went to another university that was much better. And then I uh, got good degrees. Then I uh, came to Silicon Valley. And uh, when I went to uh, work at uh, HP, they paid my way to go to Stanford. So each time I learned something new. And, uh, but in the process, uh, it, it was uh, quite difficult because uh, at the beginning, nobody knew me. And uh, when they don't know you, they underestimate you. Uh, so I couldn't find a good job. I worked in, uh, uh, in a lumber yard uh, to chop the wood <laughs> and move the wood around, which was very difficult because I wasn't so big and I didn't have big hands to pick up a big piece of wood. So it was very difficult. Uh, for some period, I was a janitor and uh, I was in uh, our university. I would get up uh, uh, early in the morning uh, to come to our uh, classroom uh, because I had to clean everything before other students came. I was embarrassed uh, if they find out that I was a janitor. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, not uh, easy, but if you believe in it and you pursue that, uh, yes, you will have uh, ups and downs. You will fail here or there. Uh, I started 10 companies. Not all of them were successful. Three of them were failed. Uh, and uh, I got fired twice. So life is full of ups and downs. But that's what makes life really interesting is if you don't give up and uh, keep working hard and believe in yourself and uh, learn and become better. Uh, you can do amazing stuff. And uh, when you become successful, uh, think of all the other people uh, that uh, uh, need your help. And remember that hey, you did not have much at the beginning. And so remember to help everyone. And uh, I remember when I was working in Lumberyard, uh, I never... Uh, uh, I didn't have my money to take a taxi. There was no bus. It was far away. And uh, I tried to hitchhike and uh, ask other people to pick me up because it was more than two hours of walking. And nobody would pick me up. And so I made a promise to myself that uh, when I become rich and I buy a car, I will pick up anybody who hitchhikes. And I've kept that promise. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I'm uh, driving in the, and I see somebody needs a ride. I don't care <laughs> who they are. I just stop and pick them up. 
because I remember nobody trusted me and nobody would give me a ride. So uh, think of this and always help people. Good things will happen if you help other people. Fantastic, Cameron. I really appreciate it. It was it was very inspiring discussion. Uh, we not only enjoyed it a lot, we are even more excited that we can have this opportunity more and more going forward. Again, thank you. That was thank you. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Uh, everybody, thanks a lot. Those of you that like w- want to see the design remain here, Mohammed is going to go over the design session. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll finish the innovation. Thank you, Kamran. Thank you. Have Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Mohammed, can you please uh, go ahead with the design for all of you, those that they have done uh, any kind of design that you wanted to get to act, become a library or, or, or make it part of the platform on PolyUp to improve PolyUp platform such that you can do the things that you're doing better. The session is now and uh, Muhammad, if you can touch both of those, that would be great. And I will pass it to Muhammad. Thank you. Amir, would you like to continue the live stream?